Hi, I'm Martin. I'd like to talk to you about notebooks and the REPL. So as Clojurians, we all love the REPL, right? And of course, I mean a real editor-connected REPL into our running system. So we love the REPL and we don't really like notebooks. I mean, we, we love our editors. We don't want to edit code in the browser. And these notebook formats that put our code into JSON blobs together with base64 encoded results that we can't reasonably put into version control or reuse, they're not so great. But there is a lot of stuff to like about notebooks. Notebooks as a medium take us beyond text. They allow us to make sense of our data, generate insights, draw pictures. They're great at telling a story and we can look at them on the web. If we consider those things, the REPL really starts to look a lot less ideal. It's only text, no visual results, they're not so good at telling a story. The reading experience is just not great with these monospaced fonts. We always need to start a running system and evaluate a form to see a result. These are some of the thoughts that went into building Clerk. Our attempt to bring those two things we love, notebooks and the REPL, closer together. I'd like to show you now what Clerk is and what it can do for you, starting with a small live coding session. Let's dive right in. One of the main perks of Clerk is you get to use your editor that some of you have spent decades tweaking to their liking and you get to keep your REPL. First, this is Emacs here that I'm using and I'm starting a REPL now, starting my closure process and I get a connection. I can evaluate this form and this will start Clerk, tell it to open a browser when it started and watch these paths for file system changes. So I'm creating a new closure namespace. Let's make the font a bit bigger. And this is basically hello world in Clerk. As I save this, you see this shows up as prose, this line comment, and I can do computations. Cool. Let's explore our dictionary a bit. And you can see my editor being helpful here. So it's completing these paths and I can slurp those. Cool, you can see in Clerk, this is a fairly large string, a megabyte, two and a half million characters. And I'm getting a tiny preview of this in Clerk and I can load more data on demand. Let's also add a small namespace declaration here and let's massage this a bit. So I'm splitting this into individual lines. This is now 230,000 words. Again, Clerk renders this nicely for me. Let's group this by the first character. Cool. Now, again, I have a map now here. I can load data at the root level as I can further down the tree. And so I think this might be a bit nicer still. So you see we have upper and lower case characters. Let's fix that. And turning this into a keyword might make things a bit nicer still. And how about we sort this as well? Cool. So this is our data set we're gonna look at. We give this a name, so these are kind of letters to words, right? Looking good. And you can see as I would evaluate this in Emacs, I'm not sure if you can see this here, I just get the var name back, whereas clerk shows us the data behind the var. We can now bring in clerk and with just some tiny, tiny code, we can make this a lot more useful. So let's put this into a table. Nice. We have a table of all the characters and again, we can load more. And Clerk is trying hard to understand most of the different table formats that folks would use in Clojure and convert them 
to understand them automatically. Next, I'd like to explore what's the distribution of words by starting character. We're mapping over the count of the values in this map. I'm using the REPL now to evaluate this. This looks good. Now let's put this into a plotly plot. That doesn't look quite right. I think I need actually a map of data and get this in here nice. Um, but the axes are wrong. Let's change them around. And some labels would still be nice. Cool. I think it's pretty clear if you compare these two things here that I can make sense of this graph and get the answer that I need much quicker and get a much clearer picture. Now I see that P and S are the most common letters. And overall, it's very, very little custom code that I need to get these things. So that's the first example with plain closure and clerk. We're going to look at two more now. So, first tab. So you might be familiar with closure core tab. If you're not, it's a closure core function, allows us to send values to a tab and we can add these listeners via add tab, which means whenever we tap a value, closure core is gonna call all of these function handlers that we've registered. And what we do here, we just conch this onto this atom we've defined. We're using a def once to make sure it is only defined once, starting out with the empty list. And now I can actually run some forms to see this in action. So you see these numbers are showing up as I tap them, some random integers. Let's also add a vector of random numbers, a map, some random words, and a few more integers. Cool, and you can see I can still lazily load more data. Again, clerks, default viewers are being helpful here by not overflowing the REPL or not overflowing clerk with two large values. If we're printing a big data set to the REPL, we run into problems. This is what we're trying to solve here. So that's tap and on to the next one. What you've seen up to here are just clerks built in viewers. I think you've seen that they can be pretty useful in a lot of situations, but sometimes you just need something special. And we're going to look at that now. Rule 30. So I'm sure everyone has seen the game of life. There are many systems like it, each named for the order in which the rules were discovered. This is a clerk notebook exploring rule 30. I'm just going to walk you through how this works. In the REPL first, we define rule 30 as this map. This defines for each entry state kind of the successor state. So if I get three cells with ones in it, and we use numbers here as a binary representation. And yeah, this is how, how my REPL would show it. Then we get the first generation as a vector with zeros and a one in the middle, and then we can finally evolve the board, right? And let's look at that. So yeah, we can kind of squint and see that there is a pattern here, but it's kind of hard to see what's going on, right? And so we can bring in some clerk custom viewers specific for our problem at hand to, I think, yeah, get a clearer insight of what's happening here. So let's do that first. So clerk viewers in general, they're maps of predicates and a render function. They can have more things on them, but that's kind of the essence. And as I enable this, you can see each cell is being displayed as this tiny square. We're using our HTML viewer here with these diffs with a fixed width and height, and as well setting some classes, and they're gonna be either with a black or white background. I can lazily load more data again here and 
things should look a lot better if I bring in more of these viewers. So we also define a viewer for vectors as well as for lists. And so compare these two things here, right? I can get a much nicer picture on the right, really without a lot of custom code. This is all the code I had to write for this situation. And it's really not that much code and not that hard. A final example of plain closure and clerk before we get to the more exciting stuff. My kids have this game, but they lost the dice that came with it. So it's not really hard to make a dice enclosure, right? This is pretty standard stuff. We have a, um, six sides to our dice. We have an atom that's going to store the state and we can kind of roll it from the REPL, right? Blau. We're also saying what the side is. Gelb. And we're printing it to the REPL. My kids can't really use anything that they can't touch on their iPad. I want to get them to use the REPL, but I think we're still a few years off here. We can bring in Clerk to make this actually happen, again, with very little code. And so what we're doing here, we're defining a viewer that's just a render function in this case. And we're putting this just on this form using Clerk with viewer. It will be called with the value inside the dice atom, which it is a side, and then we're rendering this with a pretty large font, as well as a button with an on-click handler that, when invoked, uses the clerk eval function of the viewer API to send this quoted form over to clerk, where clerk will eval it in the JVM. Let's try this. Blau. Blau. Grün. That's it. Now, up to here, this was all just plain Clojure and Clerk. But we can combine Clerk with any libraries in the Clojure ecosystem to do many more interesting things. And I'm excited to show you two great examples of this. First, Sikkim Utils. Let's make this a bit bigger. Sikkim Utils is a Clojure port of a scheme library for classical mechanics from Sussman. This closure port is built by Colin Smith and Sam Ritchie. Sam was kind enough to collaborate with us on this notebook here. In Sigim Utils, you can write closure code to represent equations that we can use to drive physical simulations. Now, this is pretty meaty stuff. We'll just fly over it and I'll share this so you can read along later. We're not going to interact with this interactively now. This is its own story that you can read along and you can play with in your editor. We'll provide a sample repo for you to play with. The first thing to note is that you have closure forms representing a physical system using functional geometry. What's cool is that Sikkim Utils can perform algebraic simplifications on them and render different representations of a given expression. Here you kind of see a prefix notation. Here you see a simplified version of this. And here we see a LaTeX rendering of the simplified version. So we're going to mostly scroll pretty quickly past most of this stuff. Here is initial conditions being set up for our double pendulum. Then there's going to be some helper code for visualizations. And until we finally get to this great picture. So what you see here is, a, again, using just a Quirk, Clerk Vega Light viewer, very little custom code. And yeah, we can move the slider here to, to run through time, right? as well as have a visualization of the pathways this took through time. And so this is kind of the chaotic case for these chaotic initial conditions. And here we have the same thing for regular data. And yeah, there's a lot more to Sikkim Utils. Um, Sam is working, working on a lot of stuff that's yeah even more mind blowing. He's just added general relativity to it. And I'm really excited to to really gain a deeper understanding as somebody who studied physics to deepen my understanding of physics through computation. So that's it for physics with Clerk and Sikkim Utils. And you almost made it just one final example, getting the world's knowledge into Clerk. This notebook is using another cool library, Jack Russia's Mandaneum. It's named after Paul Oatlitz's attempt to index the world's knowledge. Some consider it a precursor to the internet. I think it's fair to call this a precursor to Wikipedia for sure. Again, you can read along. This is a pretty good 
narrated story you can read along later. I just want to highlight kind of that not a lot of custom code is going to be needed here to do this stuff. So first we can ask it questions like, what has James Clerk Maxwell, who's also the naming patron of this library, famous for having invented or discovered? And we get back this internal ID, but can easily resolve this, find out that that's a unified field theory. And we can get this information also in many different languages. Again, this is all just the built-in viewers, no custom visualization code at all, and it's already pretty useful. But yeah, putting this into a table can make things nicer, right? Or kind of grouping it by the inventor to find out that Albert Einstein has in invented quite a few things, some of which you'll soon be able to explore with Sikkim, Utils, and Clerk. Let's look at another example visualizing geospatial data. So in this query, we're looking up all places in Germany ending in au or its, indicating that they're of Slavic origin. We're getting their latitude, longitude, and name. Then we're using a Vega viewer to visualize those on a map. This is what it looks like. Again, very little custom code. But we can also go a bit further. Here, we're querying for all swifts or hummingbirds and generating a custom table using the Hiccup viewer, showing their names, their pictures, and their home range for each one. Beautiful. A last example, and then we're done a network diagram. So this is again using Clerk's HTML viewer that also understands SVG, combining this with Jack's heroic library to draw us a network graph of the origins or of all programming languages influenced by Lisp. And yeah, we get back this really huge graph. You can best explore this on your own, I think. And yeah, so we get Lisp at the root um, and we can find closure, I think, somewhere here on the right. Here it is. I hope this gives you a sense of what's possible with Clerk when we combine it with some of the amazing libraries we have in the Clojure ecosystem. Both these notebooks were created without any changes to Clerk. I think this is a testament to the great power of the composability we have in the Clojure library ecosystem. To wrap things up, I'd like to show you how the static publishing works. And I should actually say that these notebooks you've seen, they are statically published. So yeah, I can't load these elisions here anymore, but these are actually static websites that you can easily put someplace on the web for others to read. And let's go back to my script here. So we have this clerk's build static app command, right? That opens up this index HTML page, but I actually want to show you that we can easily open my finder, get this index page and drop this directory in here. Something went wrong, but I'm happy it's not in my software. Let's try this again. Cool. And now we have this website live. And yeah, you can see I can still load this notebook you've seen here. It has all the stuff in it, right? Including this big SVG. And it's time to, for me to thank you. Thanks for listening. Thanks to everybody who contributed to Clerk. Special thanks to Jack, who's been mentoring me on this project and yeah, his help has really been invaluable. If you like Clerk, please play with it and reach out to me on Twitter or next journal on the Clojurians Slack with feedback. Thank you. <laughs>